Today's scripture reading is taken from Luke chapter 10, verse 38 to 42, from the ESV version. Luke chapter 10, verse 38 to 42. Martha and Mary, verse 38. Now as they went on their way, Jesus entered a village. And a woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his teaching. But Martha was distracted with much serving. And she went up to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things, but one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen the good portion, which will not be taken away from her. This is the word of the Lord. I pass the time now to Pastor Robert for today's sermon. I see you? You can shift eh, a bit if you can't see me. Yeah? Right? Driven. Blessed morning to all of you, both in person and also at home. Uh, uh, blessed morning to you. I just want to say to us, church, whether you are virtual or in person, you are beloved of God. And I pray that uh, all may well go well with you and that you may be in uh, good health as it goes well with your soul. <laughs> Truly, the peace of the Lord be with you. I was as I was preparing uh, this sermon, I recall the times uh, when my children were small. <laughs> we used to host uh, uh, birthday parties, you know, uh, for them in our home and we uh, usually would invite uh, around 30 guests yeah uh, in, in our hall which is not very large yeah? in a double story uh, terrace house and we would do many tasks our uh, tasks ourselves uh, from the invitation no the planning the menu and the organizing the program and activities you know and so on yeah? the long list of things to be done and of course we uh, and there were times uh, my wife and I would be so busy running around, ensuring you know, enough food, what type of food uh, to, uh, to, to prepare uh, together with the help of the domestic helper and, and, and what to buy and so on, shopping, grocery, uh, and, and ensuring you know, the drinks are ready, the cups, the place, you know, uh, in the place, the chairs. Uh, sometimes we also borrow chairs, uh, ask the guests to bring chairs. That kind of thing because we don't have 30 chairs now uh, uh, to ensure the smooth running of the event so much so that by the end of the night as we look back now we realize how little time we spend with each of our guests right running around from here front back chick kitchen so on bring all the food you know uh, it's like a kind of a frenzy you know and forgetting that our guests should have been our focus in the first place and looking back, we identify with the martyr spirit in us. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we want to give thanks, Lord, for today that we can come to worship you. And truly, Lord, even as we have sung this now, uh, teach me, teach us uh, to be like you and to give like you give your whole life. And to love like you do. Thank you, Lord, for speaking to us, to remind us, even through the time of worship. And uh, we um, continue to pray, Lord, for the church, that we will continue, Lord, to be like you uh, and receive your grace that we may be strong in you. And we're going to continue in this journey as we embark on studying, Lord, the Gospels, Lord, primarily, Lord, concerning you, yourself, and your kingdom. 
We thank you, Lord, for the journey that you have taken us through until right now, chapter 10 of Luke. Uh, just reflecting, Lord, uh, mirroring your journey, Lord, from Galilee to Jerusalem. And uh, we are going to pray, Lord, that you give us insights, you give us attentiveness, you give us, Lord, the delight in your word, Lord, that each time we go into your word, there will be something, Lord, that we expect and we anticipate and we look forward, Lord, for you to speak a word to us. And so, Father, we're going to commit this special time, Lord, this sacred time unto you. Be with us by the Spirit of God. Help us to hear well, to understand, and to do your word. In our Lord Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So let's begin uh, where the story starts uh, by looking at uh, Martha welcoming Jesus. All right? Can we read together, those of you in person? One, two, go. Now, as they went on their way, Jesus entered a village, and a woman named Martha welcomed him into her house. As mentioned in an earlier sermon, Jesus is moving toward Jerusalem no? from Galilee, the ministry there, and he's moving onward to Jerusalem, uh, to the cross, to secure the victory over sin, death, and Satan, and the grave, by giving his life on the cross for sinners. And, you, and Jesus is determined to go there. Of course, it was not just one continuous journey, you know, from Galilee straight to uh, kind of a straight road to Jerusalem. Yeah, he will move here and there, different villages, so on. Sometimes he pata a bit, you know, and then after that he go forward, he goes forward, and so on. But his ultimate journey was to Jerusalem. And and now he approaches uh, from Galilee to Samaria. And in this story, Jesus is at a point where he and his disciples come to a village. You may not see very well, uh, but I put in rectangle, in red rectangle there, and that is the Jerusalem on the left, and then Bethany on the right. There's also another Bethany across the Jordan, so don't be confused with that one. The river there, River Jordan, and then Dead Sea, the other one is the other Bethany, not this Bethany, which is quite close to Jerusalem. <clears throat> And so the village is actually uh, just about uh, two miles or 3.2 kilometers away from Jerusalem. It's just like the uh, uh, Saimdabi uh, Medical Center, or SJMC, uh, to SMC. That's about that kind of distance, right? Not very far. <clears throat> so Bethany is where sisters, Mary and Martha, and their brother, remember? Who's their brother? Lazarus, yeah, wonderful, yeah. You get A plus, no, for answering that, yeah, where they live, yeah. So they are the three of them. But we read of them in a later event in John's Gospel. But here, here, only the sisters are mentioned, yeah. We are not sure where Lazarus uh, 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 may be, yeah. Maybe in the house somewhere or somewhere went to do some errands or so on. We, we, we are not sure. Now, Jesus has not met them before. Martha welcomes Jesus into her house. And this is Martha's personality. Welcoming and hospitable. I know, like a number of us uh, in the Subha Church, yeah? uh, uh, you can identify with that. Yeah? A welcoming, a very charming personality and hospitable. And being hospi hospitable is an admirable quality. Yeah? You agree with that? <clears throat> and in those days, it is not uncommon for people to play hosts to travelers, yeah? from places to places. Huh? They walk by their feet or they travel by their donkeys and animals, huh? horses and so on. They travel like that and they go from place to place. Huh? Uh, to, uh, uh, there, there are not that many hotels like we have now. Maybe there are inns here and there. Uh, I'm not sure. Maybe there's no Airbnb and so on. But then we have homes of people and they will welcome the travelers, uh, some of whom are strangers. Maybe uh, they may not even know them or maybe recommended to them or they may have heard of them, a friend's friend or friend's relatives and so on, a relative's friend and so on. 
but they may not have seen them before, strangers. So it is like nowadays, certain uh, hospitable Christians, intentionally, you know, some of us who have homes, they set aside a guest room in the home, which means, oh, out of that five rooms, no, or four rooms, they specially designate the room, decorate it nicely, and so on, you know, and blah, 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 huh? especially for any guest who will come to their house, and they are intentional about that. So some people are like that. They want to use their assets as a channel of blessing to God's people because they recognize they are stewards. This house is not belong to them, uh, and the rooms, all the rooms do not belong to them, and there's available one. They will do what they can to make it available uh, for people. Very intentional. And so they host whoever may need it for a time and freely as well. Yeah? And of course, in our church, we have a few people here when the Orang Asli first came, so on. Right? Remember? Uh, uh, they came or when they attended, uh, um, uh, uh, want to go for an interview in uh, the uh, Sunway uh, College and so on. We asked the members, and some of you uh, open your homes to host them. Wonderful, wonderful. Freely for a time. Yeah? And you grow through serving, actually. Yeah? And we have been also, my wife and I, and uh, my uh, 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 her parents as well, have been beneficiary of a wonderful Christian hostess, Maguerai. I still cannot forget her name. Uh, yeah? Even though I saw her only one time in my life. Mm, Sister Maguerai in Tasmania. Yeah? Who gave us her house keys. And then after that, uh, that morning, she gave us the house keys, gave us some instructions and so on. And then bye bye to us, and she 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 left her house for a meeting, and we never see her again. And we were there in a house for uh, about maybe uh, around three days, two nights or so, right? And we didn't even know her all, her at all, except for her name, as she was introduced to us by a friend. That's all. Wow, what a, what a what a experience of that hospitality, you know? We were strangers to her, of course, yeah. Uh, and, and, and she didn't fear. Thank God for that. So now we want to move on. So that is Martha's personality. <clears throat> and then uh, I want to talk about Martha prepares meals. Huh? I mean, we can imagine that uh, she's a serving type. And I have these two verses there for you to see. Martha, you know, he's, she's involved in much serving. In Luke chapter 10, verse 40. And uh, of course, uh, she has a complaint, and she says, my sister has left me to serve alone. Uh, again, the word serve is there. And then in a later occasion, in John chapter 12, uh, verse 2, uh, a later occasion, when uh, Lazarus was there as well, uh, she is also, as you see, so they gave a dinner for him there, and Martha served. So again, we can see that uh, she is serving uh, others. She has a servant heart. Uh, it, it, that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah? And she has initiative. And she is an action-oriented person, task-oriented person. Yeah? And she has a mind that works fast. So given such qualities, huh, and with several mouths to feed that day, yeah, Jesus and his disciples, you know, also she thinks that these mouths need to be fed well, you know? So we can imagine, I'm just trying to imagine, she hurries to the kitchen. And she thinks uh, of the many tasks, and yes, many things uh, to worry about as well. I'm just trying to imagine. Uh, uh, uh. She thinks of the menu, just like what I mentioned earlier in the sermon. You know, my wife and I would have, to, would have to think of the menu for our, our guests, you know, 30 of them, you know, for the birthday parties. Uh, what to cook, you know, or what to buy, uh, how many dishes, you know, do we have, and, um, you know, they don't have fridge like us, stock many things, you know, yeah, uh, who can I borrow things from my neighbor, and so, uh, I've got enough ingredients or not to cook, and, or not, uh, lamb, lamb, huh? okay, lamb, they eat lamb, huh? okay, okay, where's the lamb, you know, yeah, where's the lamb, yes, Mary had a little lamb, right, <laughs> Mary had a little lamb. Mary slaughtered the lamb for me, will you? I'm trying to imagine only, okay? So that's not in the Bible, yeah? Ah, plates. Enough or not? So the number of people. Let me see how many guests. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, no? right? And moreover, not easy to start a fire, you know, to cook, you know? Yeah? yeah? There's no fire starter like now we have, you know, go camping, we have fire starter, very easy to start fire, yeah, to cook. I want to try to imagine the situation. No modern day stove, you know? Press button, start ready, you know. 
the fire, no blender, no microwave, no uh, uh, thermomix, you know. So, <laughs> imagine uh, the scene, uh, and then uh, she got to do uh, all kind of things, you no, know, running around. Uh, I just imagine, uh, and then the murmuring the kitchen, uh, wah, this is wow, 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 Oh, a bow chew, a bow car, you know? uh, not enough, uh, legs, not enough hands. And do this, do that, and do many things, you know. And the mind, like, you know, uh, with only my two hands, and then and I've got only one head. Imagine her mind being drawn away, being pulled apart, as it were, in different directions. And mind you, when we are in present here, also sometimes our mind starts to pull around, right? You sit down, you want to listen, you want, I want to preach. Then I say, okay, uh, my mind will start working, you know. Uh, uh, um, do we know the names of the guests to introduce or not? Right? Okay, yeah. Uh, uh, and, and then something, uh, what else? No, I want to think about. There are many things no, that can crowd the mind, even when we are in the, right in the midst here. Right? So can imagine Martha, mind being pulled away, pulled apart as you were, in different directions. You know? So many things to think about, so many things to worry about. And this is the picture of distraction in the Greek word. That is used to describe Martha. Martha is over-occupied, too busy over a matter, in short, distracted. We will see a verse later on to see Martha being distracted. Martha, as I look back, I look at the story, it's all about the F's, A, B, C, D, E, F, right? That the English vocabulary can describe her. She is frantic. Fast and furious, a uh, fast and anxious. She frets. You now she's like constantly, uh, visibly worry. You know, a worry what, and uh, anxious. She is frenzied or frenetic, kind of wildly. You know, active. You know, trying to get things sorted out and being done. You know, in the shortest possible time. And she is uh, probably also flustered agitated, you know, doing all things by herself, and she's frustrated probably, annoyed, distressed because unable to achieve the outcome within the timeline, you know, maybe she has the timeline to be done, but you know, things are not as what she expects. So many F's, you know, for her. And we can imagine Martha darts out of the kitchen, you know, I'm just imagining here, to peep, perhaps thinking, what are the guests doing? Where is my sister? Meanwhile, Mary sits at Jesus' feet, listening to Jesus' teaching. And so we have it there. Can please read together? One, two, go. And she had a sister called Mary, who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his teaching. I like the other translation, uh, listening, yeah? Yeah, listening, not just at one time only. Because the Greek understanding of that word is listening, which means keep listening, continually listening, yeah? <clears throat> so by sitting beside Jesus' feet, Jesus adopts the typical position of learners of a Jewish rabbi. Yeah? Perhaps Jesus may have invited her Maybe Jesus may have invited Martha also. We, don't, we are not told. Yeah? But she chooses to do the things that she does to serve. And then rabbis in those days, uh, by the way, do not accept women as students in the first century at that time. However, Jesus breaks the gender barrier. Just like we heard last week, uh, Brother Thomas uh, talked about uh, the Good Samaritan uh, story. It breaks the cultural barrier, the social barrier. Yeah? So Jesus is countercultural as she as he welcomes and accepts a female you know, Mary uh, as well to listen to him. Of course, I imagine that there will be other of his disciples huh? because they were in a group. Like Jesus, we do need to transcend any prejudice that we may have concerning you know, certain types of uh, people that we may think they are not like our kind. Yeah? And sometimes this is a big challenge for Christians as well. Yeah, we have a, because of the prejudice. Yeah? 
and some people don't like black people, dark skinned people, because they are fair skinned and so they have a prejudice. We have to admit that if we are, or maybe, you know, hmm, this particular majority of people in the country are doing all these things against us huh? and we have a prejudice against them. But Jesus says, love your enemies, right? So on. And so Jesus transcends, or maybe they are these queer people, you know, mm, LGBTIQ people, you know, uh, and then uh, we ostracize them. No, Jesus would reach out to them. Whether they are homosexual, whether they are heterosexual sinners, Jesus would reach out to them in love. Let's come back to Mary. Mary listens with rapt attention. Huh? By rapt, it means that she is fascinated, uh, she is interested. You know, I can see all of you, you know, looking like interested, right? So you are giving me the rapt attention, <laughs> right? Uh, all eyes on Jesus, and she keeps listening, as I mentioned just now, continually listens to Jesus' teaching because she sees something unique about Jesus and Jesus' teaching. So like a sponge, she soaks in Jesus' words. As a hearer who pays attention, she would quietly, as she hears, reflect on Jesus' words. How the words may apply to her, or what does it mean? Maybe she didn't understand certain things. Not sure whether she asked Jesus to explain. But certainly she was being attentive. She was not being distracted by other things. And she relishes being in the company with Jesus. That's Mary. So what about us? How interested, committed, intentional are we to Linger for a while. You know, gee, Mary, uh, Mary sits down beside the feet of Jesus. When you take a seat, you are lingering. You, in, you intend to linger for a while, right? You're not just standing and then talk, like sometimes, uh, uh, hi, bye, and then you go off, right? But when you sit down, like you all sit down, you have an intention, intention to listen for a while. To listen to the person who is talking to you. So how interested, committed, intentional are we to linger on for a while to read God's word, to hear a word from him? Not so much to analyze the word, but allowing the word to analyze us. Or do we tend to be over-occupied, too busy, over not just one thing, but many things. Think about that. Last Thursday, uh, some of you may have attended the track webinar where our Bishop Emeritus uh, Dr. Hua Yung spoke, right? And I want to quote him on this. No? He says this, we are, we are getting excitable about everything that is excitable. We, but we need to get back to the Bible. That's what he said, among other things. Right? I believe what he is saying is that excitable things are distracting many Christians today from Bible engagement. So what are you excitable about that may have distracted you and I? Are there anything that may be distracting us from engaging the Bible constantly? Mary takes it, makes it her top priority. Hence, she invests time for one thing worth to be concerned about. That is to be still in Jesus' presence to savor the spiritual food that Jesus offers. That's Mary. In contrast, 
To Mary, Martha gets all worked up. Let's read verse 40 together. One, two, go. But Martha was distracted with much serving, and she went up to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her then to help me. Yeah, I mentioned about the word distracted, right? Being pulled, drawn away, being pulled apart in all directions. That's the word there in English. That's the idea in Greek. <clears throat> Martha becomes mentally and emotionally agitated. She loses her composure. Any calmness or self-control that she may have is drawn away from her. And she reaches a tipping point and her blood begins to boil, as it were. Just like the soup that a homemaker cooks overflows when it is being boiled. When such a thing happens, it becomes messy. Relationship, family relationship including uh, also, can become messy. If family members or church leaders are not constantly in uh, the spiritual presence of Jesus, listening to his teaching, getting the guidance from him and how to relate to one another and to encourage one another to press on, you know, and whatever else that it takes to forgive one another and not listening to him, right? <clears throat> Not only the quantum of relational problem is more, but also the frequency is higher. Which means within a month, you may have more relational issues. Yeah, the frequency. And then you may have more as well. If we are not in close connection, relational connection with Jesus and in taking his word. In the case of Martha, her complaint about her sister becomes public. Huh? Can you imagine that? It, it comes out in the open. And with her pent-up emotion, Martha even has the audacity to imagine Jesus being thoughtless, uncaring, unconcerned toward her and her situation. Now just look at the verse yourself and you will see that what she says to Jesus. You see, she's so caught up with herself, and you notice the words carefully, left me. Right, is it there? Yeah? Left me to serve alone, left me. And then she also say, help me. So to her, it's all about me. That's because Martha sees things from her own perspective. She fails to see things from Jesus' perspective. That's why when we don't see things from Jesus' perspective, it's going to be all about me. And we are going to be all so flustered and frustrated because we, our expectations are not met. Because it's all about me. Oftentimes, the clash of perspectives contributes to a lot of problems for people. And so they would argue with people when there's a clash of, of perspectives because they cannot see Jesus' perspective. Now, to top it all, Martha prescribes, Martha instructs Jesus, her guest, can you imagine that, what he should do? You try to imagine you have guests in your home and so on, and after that you instruct your guest, this is what you should do, this is what, you know, yeah? You should do this, you should do that. And very prescriptive to the guests. She wants Jesus to sort out her issue with her sister for her. I've been reading the scriptures and I cannot help but notice that Mary is not the first. And she's not the only one actually to instruct Jesus what to do. 
Jesus' earthly family members do that to him. Jesus' disciples do that to him at different times. Even the devil tells Jesus what to do. It should be the other way around, right? Isn't it? That Jesus tells us what to do. And so you can say, tell her then to help me. And so Jesus tells Martha something important. But will she learn? Will she do what Jesus says to her? And will we learn as well? So what did Jesus say? What did you say to Martha? <clears throat> Can we read together, please? One, two, go. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are anxious and troubled about many things. But one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen the good portion which will not be taken away from her. Jesus does not beat around the bush. Like a doctor who diagnoses the root cause of an illness, so here we find Jesus diagnoses the real issue with Martha. And if we don't diagnose a problem properly, yeah, right, we will be in deep trouble, isn't it? If doctor doesn't diagnose us properly, if we have an illness, we will be in deep trouble. And sometimes when we read this story of Martha Mary, and sometimes... Uh, we can wrongly diagnose the problem. And that's why sometimes we can defend ourselves and so on. No? And, uh, and whatever else that comes, to, uh, we put our interpretation into the story. Yeah? And, uh, and, uh, and we see things from our perspective. No, no, no. no. Yeah? We must see properly. Yeah? What is the root cause? And Jesus diagnoses for us. You see, Martha's problem appears, uh, I said, appears to be too much work to do. But it is not. Martha's problem appears to be she is busy serving and extending hospitality. But this is not the real problem. Martha's problem appears that she is left by herself to do all the preparations. Or Jesus doesn't care about her. But this is also not... The real problem. And so what is the real problem? You look at the verse. Look at it again. What's the real problem? Huh? Let's read together. One, two. The problem is because Martha has not made the right choice as Mary has done. Being with Jesus listening to his words. That's the real problem. I would like us to imagine for a while with me, imagine if Martha were to make the right choice like her sister and also sits, with, sits beside Jesus' feet, listening to Jesus' words. Imagine that. She makes that choice like her sister. Imagine if Mary chooses to be on the same page with uh, Mary doing the thing that is most needful or important, that is giving attention to the guest, Jesus. In the story I mentioned about my wife and I hosting the birthday parties, and that's, our guests are the most important people whom we should have been given the focus, the attention. So if, imagine if Martha has chosen to be on the same page like her sister, and does the most important thing, a needful thing, giving attention to the guest, Jesus, what might be the outcome in home look like? Very different, huh? Very different. Because when you are with Jesus, you have no time to quarrel with people. Meanwhile, I look at the scriptures, I do not find any record that Jesus, together with his disciples, are expecting Martha to cook up an elaborate meal for them. There's no request. You look at the Bible yourself and see. And there's no record either or on Martha ever inquiring from Jesus and his disciples, what would you like to eat? Huh? If she had asked, maybe she can get some clue, right? She may not have 
to do all that she was trying to do. Who knows, Jesus may just have said, you know, bread and water are fine with us. Maybe Jesus even said, you know, men shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. Yeah? The kingdom of God is not food and drink, yeah? But of righteousness, truth, and love. So maybe her problem is one of her own making, uh, as I think of the story. She thinks for others what they need, when perhaps that is not what they really need. And we cannot rule out the possibility that perhaps she has made the wrong assumption about what others need. Now, she has a good heart, yeah? But without asking people, inquiring people, and you make up the mind for people, you think for people, uh, and then you go and do whatever with your personality like that, you know, uh, with the initiative, uh, with the fast thinking and doing all kinds of things, you know, to please your guests and so on, but that may not be what your guests need at that time. And then you see yourself by yourself alone, and then you start complaining, of course. Yeah? So you set a formula uh, for your own complaint. As a well-meaning host, perhaps she thinks her guests need a big or elaborate spread of food, which of course would need more preparations and a helping hand. But from the story, we gather that Jesus sees things very differently from Martha. Whereas Martha focuses on physical food, Jesus focuses on spiritual food. You get it? Martha may desire to be a good and wonderful host to her guests, welcoming, hospitable, serving the best she can. However, in this particular context, Jesus is really the host. Jesus desires to feed his listeners with spiritual food. And there is a sense of urgency and priority about Jesus. For Jesus would soon be going to the cross and going to the Father. And so we find Jesus would take every opportunity to impart everything that his disciples needed to know concerning the kingdom of God for which Jesus comes to preach. He was on a mission. He's not going to mark time, stand still, enjoy the buffet, and so on. Not that he doesn't appreciate what people does for him. Yes, Jesus calls us to serve, and so on, right? But at that particular story, Jesus wants to emphasize to us a very important thing concerning the Word of God, the teachings that is going to impart to the people. Because he was, he's soon going to the cross. Next week, we are going to hear about prayer. And I just mentioned the come to just now. The two things that are so important to Jesus, right, before he goes to the cross, is the Word of God, is the Word that he has received from the Father and he imparts to the disciples, and the importance of prayer. That's why do not neglect these two things, right? Okay? So we need to understand the broader context of this story. If we just look into this story about, yeah, Martha and Mary, you know, oh, yo, Jesus not so good to her, huh? yeah, poor Martha, and so on. Huh? And then we can get sidetracked from the real story. What Jesus, what, why this story was in place, put there for us to learn. So we need to understand the broader context of this story, otherwise we will miss the real point of this important story. So we find that Jesus feeds Mary and those around her spiritually, and Jesus would have loved to feed Martha too. But one thing we must know about Jesus, Jesus is never condemning. Yeah? Jesus comes not to condemn people, and so he will gently rebuke yeah, gently he will tell you, correct you, right? And here Jesus is trying to do something to Martha, yeah, in, including even inviting her to be like, see, to be like her sister Mary. But will Mary, but will Martha learn the one thing that is necessary? What do you think? Will Martha be like her sister, choose the good portion, make the right choice? which will not be taken away from her? What do you think? The story did not tell us 
whether Martha made such a choice. It may be a way to leave us to think carefully about our decisions too, whether we would choose to be in the presence of our Lord Jesus, to keep listening to his word for our soul as the first priority above everything else. So let us give Jesus, whom we call Lord, our highest attention and priority. And I praise God that so many of you came today. Yeah? It is almost like 80% capacity now, you know, of the uh, maximum capacity that we can have, 45 people. Yeah? <clears throat> we thank God, and also those at home as well, yeah? to come to listen to the Word of God. That is, that is commendable, and that is the thing that we need to continue to do. Whatever that may distract us on that Lord's day, we set aside this day for the Lord. And that's why we are here. That's why you are there worshipping online or in a person. Yeah? That's what we make a choice to do. That's what actually my parents-in-law made the choice as well. Even when they go for holiday overseas, on the Lord's day, they will, they will try to find in the local directory eh, and so on, where is the nearest local church that they can worship. That's the choice that you have to make. It's not about ourselves and so on. There will be time for us to enjoy, of course. Yeah? Even in a cruise, can you imagine? I've just added a story here and there. When my father-in-law and my mother-in-law went for a cruise, you know the cruise sometimes got so many activities and sometimes also got this spiritual element to it. Yeah? Yeah? And believe it or not, my father-in-law preached there in the cruise. You know, there's a room for that. And those who want to come there and so on, yeah. And not only he goes there, but he's the preacher there. That's like that, yeah? Yeah, I, I don't know. That's my father-in-law. <laughs> yeah. If we have not already established a holy habit about intaking God's word, I would recommend to you what I learned as a young adult. When I picked up a booklet from a Christian bookshop, that challenged me to spend only seven minutes a day with Jesus. Can I have the next slide, please? Oh, yes, yeah. Spend seven minutes daily, but not as a rule, but a time to relate with and learn from Jesus. Focus on Jesus in your quiet time with him. And the minutes will quickly pass by without you even realizing it or noticing it. Because you will gradually see the seven minutes not as a rule, but a time to relate, to connect, to be loved by Jesus, and to learn from Jesus. And that's so important, right? You will find your relationship with Jesus will steadily deepen over time spent with him. Surely you will. Surely you will. And you will grow in the grace and the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Not just head knowledge, but also that experiential, that personal knowledge with Jesus. Not just the cognitive knowledge. And you will come to know Jesus better. And his mission for you. Amen? Yeah. This then will be your good portion, my good portion, because you have chosen, I have chosen, not to compromise with making this choice rightly, that is, being with Jesus, keep listening to his words, not only for your own well-being, but also for our Lord Jesus Christ's namesake. And all God's people say, Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us pause for a while. Yeah, let's pause for a while. And we want to respond to Jesus in our own way, in our own quiet time. Yeah. Just ask the musicians to get ready as well while we do that. And of course, uh, uh, do spend some quiet moments with the Lord yourself. <clears throat> Speak to Him 
he listens. Father in heaven, your people are here, are speaking to you. May you hear them and may they hear a word from you as well. So, Father, I pray that uh, your word shared to us today. I pray, God, that uh, we will continue to move on, Lord, from duty to delight in your word. That truly, Lord, we want to affirm your light. Your word is a light <coughs> unto our feet, a lamp unto our feet, <coughs> and lamp unto our path. So I just want to commit, Lord, this to you, that for our church, Lord, we will continue to grow. Continue to grow, Lord, in you. You love us. We thank you, Lord, you never condemn us, even though, Lord, we need your rebuke. And we thank you for that, for correcting us, for rebuking us. Thank you so much that we may grow in you. In our Lord Jesus' name we pray. Amen.